Hi, I'm Julianne Smith, and I'll be presenting my research on an ecological approach to management of the oriental cockroach in an urban farm environment, which was done under the mentorship of Christy Clay at Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. All of the images you'll see were taken by me on site during the course of my research. The oriental cockroach is one of four main cockroach pest species in the state of Utah. They are generally found outdoors as they prefer cool, damp habitats and are tolerant of the cold winter weather here. Although they will eat just about anything, outdoor cockroaches prefer a diet of decaying vegetation, making farms an ideal habitat. I partnered with Green Phoenix Farm in Salt Lake City, Utah earlier this year to develop a pest management plan for a sustainable approach to pest control. This project is an extension of that plan, focusing on a single aspect, the experimental process of determining the most ideal trapping method for control of oriental cockroaches on the farm. Green Phoenix Farm follows organic standards, which includes abstaining from the use of pesticides. For reasons I will introduce later, they also wanted the cockroaches caught alive. Many standard traps are harmful to beneficial species, as they focus on extermination instead of live trapping. The sticky trap, pictured here, demonstrates how these traps kill beneficial species as well as the cockroaches they attract. This is called bycatch, which refers to the trapping of any unwanted organisms. While you may not want spiders in your home, they provide beneficial ecosystem services, such as predation of farm pests, and are very important in this setting. You may be wondering why bother with cockroaches if they're living outside. In addition to donating food shares to the community, Green Phoenix Farm makes and distributes compost. Their compost pile, part of which is pictured here, is a prime habitat for outdoor cockroaches because it provides them with their ideal food source of decaying vegetation. The farm director expressed three main concerns about the cockroach population on the farm. First, the issue of compost infiltration. Because it provides a food source, cockroaches linger in the compost pile. Secondly, cockroaches may sneak into food share boxes, essentially hitchhiking from the farm. Both of these concerns lead to the possibility of farm cockroaches ending up in a customer's home. Finally, the presence of cockroaches, if seen on the farm or on outgoing products, could lead to misconceptions about the farm being dirty, which simply isn't the case. Cockroaches are pervasive worldwide and congregate in ideal habitats regardless of cleanliness, so long as they have access to food, water, and shelter. Cockroaches can also be beneficial, and this is why my focus was on live traps. The farm has a flock of chickens who require a supplemental diet of insects. Currently, farm employees are catching cockroaches by hand to feed to their chickens. As part of my research, I investigated the potential for long-term live trapping of cockroaches as chicken feed. With the goals of the farm in mind, we experimented with cockroach traps that met specific criteria. The most ideal trap is pesticide-free, live traps the target species while minimizing beneficial bycatch, is easy to use, and can be used as a prototype to make high-capacity and long-term traps for use on the farm. So what is missing from published research? While there is a great deal of literature on sustainable pest management, as well as the use of pesticides for cockroach control, this was not our primary focus. Pest management requires species-specific knowledge in order to be successful, and research is lacking for outdoor cockroach species. As it turns out, a pest control method meeting the farm's criteria is exactly what is missing from available research a species-specific, non-lethal trapping method that minimizes beneficial bycatch. This led me to my research question. Following the farm's criteria, I set out to discover what trapping method 
is most ideal for populations of the oriental cockroach in an urban farm environment. My research was conducted at Green Phoenix Farm, located on 1.4 acres in the heart of downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. This working farm produces fresh produce, eggs, and compost for the community and provides an ideal habitat for the oriental cockroach. Four trap types were compared, standard non-baited pitfall traps, baited pitfall traps, elevated and baited traps, and a modified version of the elevated trap. Pitfall traps are a standard ecology tool. A collection device is buried with the rim flush with the ground and a solution of soap and water is poured inside. Pitfall traps are nonspecific and lethal, meaning they work by catching and killing any ground-dwelling arthropod that approaches and falls inside. To entice a greater number of cockroaches, a baited trap was used next. The standard pitfall traps were outfitted with a skewer for holding bread, as research shows that cockroaches enjoy starchy foods. The image on the left shows how the trap is flush with the ground, and like standard pitfall traps, these traps are also lethal with a soap and water solution inside. For the third trap, the cups were elevated out of the ground. This was done to avoid bycatch and serve as a non-lethal trapping method. The inner rim was lined with petroleum jelly to prevent the cockroaches from climbing out. Instead of a soapy solution, the traps were baited with beer-soaked bread in an attempt to further increase the number of cockroaches attracted to the traps. For unknown reasons, beer-soaked bread has been shown to be especially effective at baiting cockroaches. The fourth trap type was built as a modified version of the elevated trap. Using double-stacked cups, a false bottom was built here to hold the beer-soaked bread which prevented the beer from evaporating too quickly and made cleaning the traps easier. Openings for cockroach entry were cut into the upper portion of the cup shown here so a lid could be used to cover the top. The lid was used with two purposes in mind. First, to offer a more ideal location to scavenge since cockroaches prefer small dark spaces and secondly, to serve as a prototype for a larger enclosed trap that is preferred by farm management. Sampling duration for each trap type ranged from 2 to 14 days and the number of traps differed between trap types. The reason for these differences was twofold. After two nights of trapping with both pitfall trap types, the number of beneficial bycatch was much higher than the number of cockroaches, and it was decided that lethal traps were not ideal. We moved on after two nights to prevent further extermination of beneficial bycatch. The number of traps changed in response to the considerable amount of time and labor that went into a larger sample size. Traps were checked every 24 hours. If a soapy solution was used, the contents were strained before being sorted, counted, and cataloged, as depicted in the image to the right. When live traps were used, beneficial bycatch were released, and cockroaches were fed to the chickens after being sorted, counted, and cataloged. In order to accurately compare the trap types, results were standardized due to the difference in trap nights and number of traps between trap types. Data analysis compared each trap type by the average number of cockroaches per trap night per number of traps. Bycatch were analyzed in the same manner to compare the efficacy of trap type in reducing the capture of beneficial species. As a reminder, the most ideal trap will meet certain criteria. It is pesticide-free, live traps the target species while minimizing beneficial bycatch, is easy to use, and can be used as a prototype to make high-capacity and long-term traps for use on the farm. This graph compares the catch results between trap types. 
These results reflect the standardization in data analysis conducted to adjust for the different number of trap nights and number of traps used. Trap types are shown on the x-axis and the y-axis displays the average number of cockroaches and beneficial bycatch per trap night per number of traps. Cockroach numbers are in black and bycatch are in gray. Ideally, we'd like to see a tall black column with the shortest gray column in comparison for the best trap type. From left to right, the non-baited pitfall traps caught nine times more beneficial bycatch than cockroaches. The baited pitfall traps seem to have worked as an effective lure because they caught twice as many cockroaches as the non-baited pitfall traps with 50% less bycatch. However, the baited pitfall traps caught nearly two and a half times more bycatch than cockroaches. The elevated traps caught approximately six times more cockroaches than bycatch and bycatch decreased by 19% compared to the baited pitfall trap. The modified elevated traps prevented beneficial bycatch altogether, zero in total, which is why you aren't seeing a gray bar to indicate the bycatch numbers. However, these traps caught 25% less cockroaches than the elevated traps. So which trap best meets the given criteria? This chart compares each type with the criteria in mind. The X's mark traps that meet the criteria. The blank spaces mean that the traps either didn't meet the criteria or are less ideal when compared to the other trap types. The elevated trap live trapped the greatest number of the target species. Both the elevated and modified traps minimized beneficial bycatch. The non-baited pitfall and elevated traps are most easy to use when compared to the others, and all trap types can be easily prototyped by the farm. Both pitfall traps exterminate their catch, which eliminates them from the running for the most ideal trap type. Although the modified trap had zero beneficial bycatch, the elevated trap caught a higher number of cockroaches and met all required criteria. In conclusion, the elevated trap caught the greatest number of live cockroaches with the least amount of bycatch when compared to all trap types. This makes it the most ideal trap for the farm. Future directions of this research include a longitudinal study of the oriental cockroach population at Green Phoenix Farm to inform the ultimate trap design. Seasonal fluctuations in the cockroach population may have influenced the results, so a longitudinal study would help to determine if the modified trap results reflect this seasonality or truly reflect the trap design. Additionally, Cockroaches are sensitive to habitat modification, thus research on physical modifications at the farm would provide further insight into best practices for cockroach control. I would like to thank my mentor Christy Clay, James Loomis, and the team at Green Phoenix Farm, my McNair cohort and advisors at Westminster College for their support and assistance, and of course, thank you all for your time today.